the change for me came after learning what the disease was. And that was the catalyst because without it, it's just another tra- you know, trendy diet. It's just another whole 30, 30 days and my life has changed. Endometriosis is full body disease, not just because of lesions, but because of these immune factors and the inflammation. So yeah. that's why you can have so many seemingly disconnected symptoms. Like mine was chronic fatigue. Other people have migraines or crazy rashes or eczema yeah. or acne, you know, anything that is an infl- chronic inflammatory issue. You're going to say, well, it's not related to my endometriosis. Well, they're both related to that chronic systemic inflammation and immune dysfunction. Once you address all of that through these other seemingly unrelated factors, you can feel so much better. Knowing what endometriosis is, I feel so much more confident to make the best choices in my life now. No doctor ever told me that. No endo activist site ever told me that. I feel confident now. And that's my hope. Awareness is the precursor to all choice. How can you even make a choice about something if you're unclear or unsure what it even is that you're making a choice about? The clarity in this episode shines a light on what endometriosis is, how to heal it, and where to go for help. This episode is dedicated to everyone out there experiencing the absolute hell that is called endo, as we reveal how to start with where you are, with what you have, and how that is enough. Before we dive in though, I sincerely want to thank you for having the bravery to watch this show, face your shit, and heal yourself. Because we're talking about truth, freedom, and very real shit on this show, its exposure and reach are being censored. When you press that like button though, or leave a comment, it helps this show become less censored. So thank you also for having the bravery to like, share, and subscribe, and share this content far and wide to help me break the algorithm and help others deal themselves. If you would like to submit questions for guests, receive exclusive gear, as well as be featured on the show, Visit the site and subscribe with a one-off donation or become a member for as low as $5 a month. So who am I and why did I decide to create this show? Well, after unraveling all the medical and pharmaceutical lies I had been told about my endometriosis, I educated myself and I was able to heal myself after 17 years of debilitating pain. On this show, whether it's endo or any other disorder labeled as chronic, We expose the lesser known solutions that can heal your mind, your body, and your spirit. I'm also an artist and photographer, so I created an ongoing art series about all of this called Every Phase, and I illustrate how I healed myself as I live by the phases of the female hormonal cycle. The artwork shows what's happening in the brain as well as in the body during each phase and reveals how to leverage and biohack this energy in your life. I am actually living the art, so it's about more than just healing. The writing and the art discuss truth, freedom, our current financial and healthcare system slavery, as well as the way out of it. To learn more, subscribe to the newsletter on my website, meredithochoa.com. While you're there, be sure to check out these awesomely fun new $50 limited edition bite size, because you can actually bite it, acrylic block pieces, capturing all of the images from my Every Phase series. And you can also pick up a personally signed copy of my award-winning augmented reality interactive book, Face Your Shit, Heal Yourself. So all of that to say, even though I was lied to for years by doctors promoting Big Pharma, I was able to find experts who helped me achieve what I thought was impossible. This show introduces them to you. The expert we are chatting with today is author, researcher, educator, nutritional therapist, and paleo autoimmune protocol certified coach, Katie Edmonds. Katie is an endometriosis focused author of the four-week endometriosis diet plan, as well as Heal Endo, an anti-inflammatory approach to healing from endometriosis. And she is also the creator of HealEndo.com. Heal Endo is an integrative approach to aid the body in healing from endometriosis. If you've battled with endo for years or are newly diagnosed, this may be the approach to endo you have been missing. 
based on a whole foods, whole movement, and whole lifestyle approach to reclaiming your life. She categorizes this approach into five main pillars, nutrition, movement, mending, connection, and learning. You may be missing one, two, or all of them from your life, but as you start filling in the empty voids, your body will respond by beginning to heal itself from the inside out. Katie lives on the North Shore of Kauai, next to the biggest mahogany forest in the US, with her funny hound dog, a loving husband, two wonderful miracle children, and a vigorous passion for helping women with endo. It's actually perfect that we're talking right now because it's Mercury retrograde, because I call Mercury retrograde the period of the universe. Like the universe has its period because you're not supposed to really do anything new. You're supposed to like rest, reflect, like anything that begins with a re during Mercury retrograde. You're supposed to purge out and reflect what didn't work over the past few months release that so you can go into the next cycle so it's very very similar to the menstrual cycle the menstrual phase that we experience in our bodies so i totally reformed my relationship with mercury retrograde when i started looking at it that way because the whole universe really is just mirrored in our bodies right yeah yeah the older i get the more i see that and feel it too was like you become so sensitive so the little changes around it's i'm also in day four of my cycle so it's fitting yeah. mercury mm-hmm. retrograde the universe me and now we're going to talk about yeah, healing endo <laughs> yeah really and i actually have your book here oh look at you yeah i love that i like i like the cover it turned down okay me too. And really, for everyone listening, if you don't have the book, go get it. <laughs> An anti inflammatory so approach. With one click Amazon. Yeah, exactly. And it's so just head on to just the root cause of the issue, right? Just anti inflammatory inflammation in all areas, not even just biological, right? Just inflammation, irritation what we were just talking about mercury retrograde in our lives i'd love for you to share a little bit about how you came to face your own shit leading you to write this incredible book and become the researcher phenomenal nutritional therapist that you are today you know i've been thinking about this question (laughs) because i i feel like i didn't when i think of facing your shit Like I think of actually doing the deep dive work more into like all the internal processes that have shaped us and molded us and changed our perspective to be what it is over the course of our lifetimes. And that's why like when you actually face that after distracting, be it from alcohol or not great behaviors, not great friendships, whatever your distractions were and actually facing it, I don't feel like I got there until two years ago. I feel like when I actually, before that, and it was like I had healed from endo by then. I say heal, like I found a place of remission. And I feel like I was not even ready. I didn't have the cellular energy to face my own shit at that point. I had, I was like in the depths of endometriosis as we can be hitting bottom of the barrel. And I just got so angry. And that's when I started researching endometriosis, found out what it really was, because you can go on PubMed and find out all this stuff that we're never told. You know, it's really an inflammatory disease rooted in immune dysfunction. There's tons of different types, over 65 different types, multifactorial. There's many factors that go into creating it and to healing from it. So you don't just like catch endometriosis, which is why I thought, oh, I just got endometriosis like the flu. I'm so unlucky. I always get these diseases. Woe is me. You know, here's my violin. I'm another chronic Mm -hmm. disease for Katie. But it was actually almost through the process of digesting that information, changing my life completely, finding remission, and then finding the passion and drive to write that book while raising a baby at the same time. It was like that process. It was almost like the kind of the trigger for me to actually get to the point where I was able to face my own shit. And that's what I've been doing for the past two years is I've had some enormous losses in my life, some really big deaths. Obviously, the transition into motherhood is like a huge, it's almost like the death of your former self, not to sound gross about it, but we say goodbye to the maiden and now you're the mother. 
and there's some big transitions. So I feel like I'm right there now. I am like probably a decade behind you and getting there, but, but it's been this enormous process of shedding layer after layer, like an onion to the point that like being vulnerable in all the right ways doesn't make me freeze up with this. My shield is perfectionism and like creating barriers rather than opening doors for relationships and opening doors to release that what I've been holding on to. So I'm like in the process right now of facing everything that I think I I need to. I so, so relate to that too. I think people think of, and we're trained to think of things in like this, oh, you have this disease or you caught this, now take this and you're healed or now do this and it's healed. And healing really is not a destination. It's so much the journey and it never really ends. Like you said, it's it just evolves into different layers of understanding. But like we reach the point of feeling better and everyone has that point of, okay, I'm considering myself healed now because I can actually get up or go to work or get out of bed. But there's so much more you didn't even realize was on the menu because you couldn't even conceive or have the capacity to understand that you could feel that good because our normal is totally just based in like how we're feeling now. I didn't know exactly how you're feeling because I, I, I used to journal a lot and it was like four or five months after I had like really changed my diet because for me, the shift in diet was the very first thing that actually helped me. Everyone has their own thing. I went from a low fat, high carbohydrate vegetarian to a nutrient as I'm like eating liver and organ meats and so many low starchy veggies. Like I had no idea it was possible. And it was like, I felt, I say that I felt the clouds lift as if with the chronic fatigue and I was just really hanging on by caffeine. (laughs) That was the the thing that kept me like standing up. And suddenly I had natural energy and I don't even remember when I had natural energy before. And I was like, I'm healed. You know, and this is like right. four months into my journey, but it was only because I yeah. felt that much better. And I, that was, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago. So I'm 10 years older and I feel so much better than that person who had quote unquote just healed. <laughs> because yeah, yeah, it's like you add in all the processes and it's no crash diet. Like you're morphing, you're evolving. And every year you should feel a little bit better. Of course, I feel a little older in certain ways, a little slower in certain ways, but but heck, a lot wiser after such a a big journey. Totally. One thing, one of my podcast guests, Teresa Lear Levine said, flow is the new fast, (laughs) which I love. It's so true. It's so true. (laughs) Yeah, it's that yin energy that they've all but almost deleted out of our society that are we really feeling the boomerang effect of now that because it's been so yang or so overly masculinated, like every area of our lives, we're feeling what it's like to not be in that balance. So I think we are definitely returning to an introspection, a reflection, like we were just talking about with Mercury retrograde, but not only just spiritually, mentally, but also in health really critically looking at is this even food on the shelves what is it actually on that ingredients list and how is it making my body feel and this is definitely something in your book you just have such an important voice to share in the world of health and it's just it's so evident when you take a look at your book there's no one size fits all approach to healing endo like you said you had natural energy after returning to eating mead. For me, it's completely the opposite. So there really is no one size fits all, but I think it's more about why I've enjoyed reading your book so much is it's about listening to your body and those nutrient dense foods, regardless, mm-hmm. fruits, vegetables, meat, wherever you lay on the spectrum, the nutrient dense diet and blood sugar regulation and nervous system system regulation. Can you share a little bit about your philosophy, including all of those things in in approaching endometriosis? 
Yeah. So I guess it's going to the heel endo approach. Heel endo was just the name of my website and it's evolved into the books and everything else. The philosophy of heel endo starts with understanding what endometriosis is and how it develops. Then it is like a cell inside of our body that it has mutated both genetically and epigenetically to a point that it doesn't resemble what's like a house cat versus a tiger. They're really different. And then it's activated into your tissue. And then there's the whole stages of progression into worse forms of disease. You're looking at scar tissue adhesions. So this process is called endoing. And I think that is such a huge, important factor to understand that endometriosis evolves like a verb inside of us. You don't, you weren't born with stage four endometriosis. You can be born with an endo-like cell, but you're not even necessarily born with a lesion. There's no research that I know of to date showing any baby that's born with a lesion. You're basically born with a cell. When it becomes activated as a lesion, that is thanks to an enormous process that involves crazy immune dysfunction. So it's your immune system that should be cleaning up the cell like it does with cancer cells, like it does through mutated damaged cells throughout your body every single day. And this is why um, cancer is also can be referred to as cancering. It's the process of cancering inside your body or your immune system takes care of it. When your immune system is acting irrationally or it's overloaded or it's exhausted, suddenly it can't do the job that it's supposed to do or it's doing things that it's not supposed to. And it does both with endometriosis. A, it establishes it as the lesion. So it actually is your immune system is what grows the blood supply. I think the nerves that go into it and establish oxygen, nutrients to it. And then your immune system also fails to see the lesion and clean it up add more inflammation thanks to the immune system and you're looking at worse forms of disease and progression, the scar tissue adhesion. So when you look at it from that way, you weren't just like an unfortunate person who was born with that amount of endometriosis in you. You don't just get it like the flu I mentioned because it, it takes, I don't want to say your personal responsibility because it's no one's fault that it happened right at all. It's none of our, our faults, but it takes your agency away from you is what it does, your ability to affect change. When you look at endoing as a process and you say, okay, it starts because of the immune dysfunction and the inflammation. It's associated with estrogen. It's not caused by estrogen. Basically, everything you do in your life can help prevent the endometriosis progression, potentially prevent its establishment in the first place. And I really, I've mentioned cancer a few times. So it's very similar to cancer that you can stack the deck in your favor in every way through diet and lifestyle aids. And this is, if you eat a lot more antioxidants, you're less likely to develop endometriosis in the first place. If you have a intensely stressful childhood event, something like abuse as a kid, you're almost twice as likely to develop endometriosis, right? Nervous system dysregulation. Uh, that's the worst kind you can have is from an incident like that as a kid. Then you have, if you eat enormous amount of antioxidants, you're eating the nutrient-dense foods, you, you're focusing on your breathing, your nervous system, your sleep, your, it's like the, the absolute foundational needs of your cellular health, you are less likely to get into the worst categories of endometriosis. Every time you open up your body, you're putting yourself at risk. So with new imaging, which they're really getting good at, they're going to be able to tell these sorts of things, like what the endometriosis is doing. But for now, what we can do is we can see how animals behave before and after these types of inputs, the nutrient-dense diet, the antioxidant-rich diet, the stress levels, the sleep, everything. And what we see with animals is that endometriosis lesions, when provided with, I'd say, the, the amount of healthy inputs that they can get, they either stabilize or regress. So they're disappearing, they're shrinking, their volume is lessening, their symptoms are minimizing or disappearing, or they're still there, the lesions, but they're just not causing the, the problem that they were before or causing damage. And what we can do is we can take that and say, okay, th these are the factors that are helping. And we look at women who actually have been diagnosed with endometriosis and we see that you are more likely to have endometriosis stabilize or regress than you are have it progress into worse forms of disease. Studies along those lines aren't looking at the factors that did prevent it. It's just showing, right, endometriosis can behave all these different ways. We're at stage four, like lots of scar tissue adhesions going on, where it's like the last place you want to end up. So you have these, it's like the stories like you, that the anecdotal ones, right, where they're not going back in and seeing your lesion with the camera, what's going on, but your life is completely reclaimed 
what you can do is think, okay, how do I stack the deck in my favor as a, a human yeah. being with this disease that's going to affect me very uniquely, very different than Katie, right? Very different than Meredith. What inputs do I need? And mm -hmm. it really, I want to say it's life or death, but when you are feeling so awful, it is life or death. It's, it can be so yeah. helpful. Yeah. It's really interesting when you really start to look. And I wish that I would have had resources like your book and things like that so much earlier in my healing journey. It's just now reading. I've looked at your book and we talked about the healing process after considering myself healed after being able to get out of bed, after being able to get through the next five minutes without in screaming pain and lying in a pool of blood and sweat on the floor, like the exorcist or something, you know, it's, and mm -hmm. we've all, right, we've all been there. And it's now at a point where it's like more fun because it's like optimizing instead of like you need to do, there's, you know, you're in complete surrender mode when you're in that much pain there is no other choice but to just literally crawl your way through and again that could be a whole other episode as, as well talking about just pain and the lessons that it can teach you and some of the really profound messages you can find on this journey of just reforming your relationship to pain in general and how it can mm -hmm. actually help you heal disease in that way as well, through actually going into the pain. We should consider an episode on that because it's definitely, it's almost, it can sound offensive to someone who's in pain. Maybe if it's coming from the wrong source, like we'll sit with your pain, become yeah. more comfortable with being in pain. But if you're just going to accept it and it's coming from a bad source, it can, it, that's where the offensiveness comes from. But if you're thinking about it from a process of healing and from people who have bridged that gap before, like, yeah. There are those moments where you are trapped in that type of pain and you have to learn to, to release the pain and to make it through the other side without collapsing all of your hope. You've been working so hard. You're doing all of this and you have another flare or something's like going, well, there's sex is still painful. The periods still suck. Yeah. And learning to sit with that and to be with that and say, this is part of the process because there's no changing it. There's no changing that reality right now. It's just figuring out in your body how to get through it. And I found, I don't know about you, the more I accepted the pain rather than fighting it, it lessened so much. And it sounds a little, unless you've been in labor and it's like when you actually stop fighting the labor pains, they, the, the pain diminishes at least a little bit. But it's really similar across the board. When you stop pushing against the wall, you reserve energy, you calm down, your stress levels lessen and your nervous system and immune system can start to re-regulate. Absolutely. It's we only feel pain because of resistance to begin with. <laughs> that is very deep what I just said, but absolutely coming from anyone else, it'd probably be super insulting, but I've definitely been, I've been there. I've been there. And I, out of all the things I wish someone would have told me, I wish that I would have heard that from someone. So definitely. And this brings up a good point. So for all of those girls and women out there that are experiencing endo pain, what would you say was most significant for you in helping you heal? So my brain is like much more analytical. And so for me, the biggest thing was actually learning what endometriosis is. Just because before I had been doing everything, I called throwing mud at the wall to see what would stick. I thought it was caused by estrogen. So all I did was try to lower my estrogen. And I was doing, I, I felt like I was doing everything, quote unquote, but I was not doing anything that was right. So I was just like spinning my wheels, trying to do, I was on the cleanses, the detoxes, the insane, very restrictive diets. It was everything that seemed really great in a beautiful white bound book of like just grains and herbs and stuff. And my body was freaking out inside. So once I understood what endometriosis is, how it develops that it's immune dysfunction. At the time, I knew what an autoimmune disorder was because I had him when I was a kid. So even though it's not an autoimmune disorder, it was the same thing. Oh, it's immune dysfunction. Well, I know plenty of stuff that 
this can work on immune dysfunction. We're talking about getting all the chemicals out of your bath and body products. I like made a bag. I called it my cancer bag. It was literally everything I had in my bathroom. The ones that said like organics with an X. That's like not organic. And I was just like, well, it works. I all the bath. <laughs> we're so yeah. cool, right? I used to be the chick that walked into any drugstore and it was just obsessed with the scents and the smells and the laundry detergent, the Febreze on everything. That was me. And I know now that plays a direct role in the creation of an endolite cell, a direct role. Okay, I can do better. But it was learning that, okay, nutrient dense diet. I realized just how malnourished I was, that my food had nothing to do with calories or the amount of protein that I got from my tofu or whatever. (laughs) So I had to like change basically everything. But the change for me came after learning what the disease was. And that was the catalyst because without it, it's just another, you know, trendy diet. It's just another whole 30, 30 days. And my life has changed. It was like, this is a long haul thing. My immune system is so dysregulated. It's doing everything wrong from the peritoneal cavity where my lesions are to the entire systemically through my entire body. That's endometriosis is full body disease, not just because of lesions, but because of these immune factors and the inflammation. So that's why you can have so many seemingly disconnected symptoms. Like mine was chronic fatigue. Other people have migraines or crazy rashes or eczema or acne, you know, anything that is an chronic inflammatory issue. You you say, well, it's not related to my endometriosis. Well, they're both related to that chronic systemic inflammation and immune dysfunction. Once you address all that, through these other seemingly unrelated factors, you can feel so much better. So that was where my my personal catalyst was. And not everyone I find likes to know the same depth of information that I do, but but in my book, it does explain what endo is so that everyone I feel can walk away just with more confidence saying, okay, maybe I don't agree with some of what Katie says there. Like, I'm not going to eat that liver or whatever it is. But knowing what endometriosis is, I feel so much more confident to make the best choices in my life now. No doctor ever told me that. No endo activist site ever told me that. I feel confident now. And that's my hope. Knowledge truly is power. Just knowing the truth and being able to have, like you're saying, feel again, like you can have some kind of agency over your body because Mm -hmm. you're really looking at exactly what you're dealing with. Like, awareness and clarity it's everything it's the precursor to all choice to any choice you make you have to be aware and clear about what you're dealing with for me it was very similar it was really learning about the phases was just everything like realizing that it's not just your period like this is your life and then you have menopause you have perimenopause and then menopause this is your whole life this isn't just oh my gosh I die on my period this is all organs affected like you said the whole body and really looking at it from the phase perspective of I'm not just like a man doing this every day in day out hormonally reloading like a 24-hour clock this is natural to be on this 28 day long circuit kind of battery reloading and and being able to leverage that it's so empowering it's empowering it does take some release right when we're taught to everything is linear and like the phases of the reproductive system are easily overridden by birth control so just go on that right if you're tired drink caffeine if you know if you can't sleep take a sleeping pill it's just this it's like you are in control of your body. That's like the the feeling that we're told. So when our body feels out of control, it feels like we've lost control of everything. Like drugs aren't fixing it anymore, all of our inputs. And that is that whole, everything should be the same every day. And I, I find it hard. I'm just getting my cycle regularly again after having two kids and breastfeeding for so long and hopping back Mm -hmm. into that. Oh, right. I have a follicular phase. And then my luteal phase, I am totally slower. I just yeah, yeah. And I have to like that. And part of me was like, wow, it'd be so helpful if I didn't have this. But at the same time, like we evolved to be like this for a reason. And that's that like divine acceptance of what lessons is it teaching me, Katie, who must always go a million miles an hour, that you have to slow down sometimes, like the yin and the yang. And I have to show my kids what it looks like for a parent, for a woman to model that it's okay to relax and not always just be so on the go and tense all the time 
I don't, I didn't really have any yeah. women role models that did that when I look back in time. I had a lot of, a lot of women role models who were great. It was like the career role models. They're the ones who say, look, women, you can do anything you want, mm-hmm. right? You can be an astronaut. You can run a nonprofit. You can be an engineer. But I had no women who were actually like s- slowing down, taking that time, showing me what proper rest looks like, what a life looked like that wasn't just scrambling for achievement and accolades all the time. That's what it felt like you're groomed for. And that's what your menstrual cycle helps you do those ups and downs, right? So you do the fast and the slow the same within the same beat, so to speak. So I'm, yeah. I, like I said, I'm still learning so much about myself and what it is just to be like a woman in 2023. Speaking of, if you could have a gigantic billboard anywhere with anything on it, metaphorically speaking, getting a message out to millions or billions of people, what would it say and why? With endometriosis, I would want everyone to know that it's not always progressive. That's like the big thing that I really want everyone to know with endo is that, which I already touched on before that it wouldn't yeah but if it was any message in the world i don't know it's do I, just going with it with what i feel today i feel it'd be like hold people's hands like hold loved ones hands more often just like that whole tied to community and that like safe touch is okay and not just okay but necessary there's just so much stopping of touch yeah. now because of unsafe touch right which exists but yeah. and everyone no matter who you are You need safe touch and you also don't need unsafe touch. So they're two different things. And I just love the idea of people being able to choose who that person is that they're going to be able to have that. It's it's not like sexually intimate, but like intimate touching with and how much that helps calm everything down and make everything better. Like I think when I hold my kids' hands and it like really makes them feel better. But when my husband holds my hand, if I'm feeling angry or sad or jittery or tired, whatever it is, it's like, Hey, I'm here for you. And I think that feeling everyone could use a little more of today that like someone is here for them. So if that sounds a little strange, I, I think it would, I think it would, I think it's okay. Amen. So important. So important. Especially someone that I've been through sexual abuse. I know what unsafe touch really is, what it's <laughs> like. Definitely, absolutely contributed to my endometriosis. But you're so right. That feeling of safety. What else is there? Safety, acceptance, love. That's really what we're all just re-remembering at the end of the day. So it's such so important. It'd be an awesome billboard and reminder of that truth for everyone. I'm sorry about the sexual abuse you endured, but is you just saying safety is at the end of the day what we seek? And when that is that is our nervous system's right mode and that is your immune system's right mode. So sometimes when we talk about things that can seem a little overwhelming. Like if you aren't eating well, you're not sleeping well, and maybe you don't have a great family dynamic or relationship dynamic, whatever it is, just it can feel too overwhelming and you just shut it out. Well, none of those things are going to work for me. And at the end of the day, it's sometimes just choosing what feels safest that will allow you to move forward. Just choosing your next step of what you're going to do if things seem out of reach is creating a whatever safety it is in your world, making that firm in your mind so that even if your life doesn't feel safe for whatever reason, they're called safety anchors. And you can, if you don't have a hand to hold, you can still in your mind, you can either creatively imagine the safest thing that you possibly can, or it can be a memory. It can be a scent and just bringing yourself back to that, especially when you feel like you're going off the deep end, either a stress spiral or your life. If it is that that challenging that it feels that unsafe until you can get to the place of safety and then once you get to the place of safety that's when you can take up something like the diet and the lifestyle or the surgery or whatever you need for endometriosis but it's a big part of facing your shit is understanding how safety is the foundation from which we all heal and if you don't feel safe Mm -hmm. that nutrient dense diet isn't going to be that helpful and sleeping better and moving better and everything I talk about in my book isn't going to be that helpful. Yes to safety on every level. It's what we really need to feel inside, no matter where you are, what you're doing. It's just to feel safe. Yeah. And going back to talking about reforming your relationship with pain, it's the same thing there. I think people, when you get on the healing journey, can become obsessed with like, oh, 
I'm having to take painkillers. That's bad. Or, oh, I have this hot water bottle. You know what? Do whatever the hell you feel like you need to do to get like that. You have to have the foundation to even start from. Start with where you are, with what you have, and that's enough. If you have to take painkillers, who cares? If you have to take heavy narcotics just to be able to be able to sit with a little bit of your pain, because I remember I could take heavy drugs and still have pain and still be able to have, still be able to glean what it is that I'm needing, what it is that my pain is telling me, you're still able to do it. And then you'll get to another level and it'll go deeper and another level. So it's so important though, establishing Mm -hmm. that trust and safety. So you're absolutely right on. Which speaking of, let's chat about your new comprehensive endo program that you're developing to re-regulate the body. Yeah, um, really excited. I wish I had a little more time to work on it right now. But the book, if you haven't read it, is very full of information. And some of it is highbrow. It's a little, I talk, there's like over 400 different scientific studies in it. Needless to say, there's a lot of interest in that I've received from people wanting to work with me to help them through the process, like how to implement these dietary changes, these lifestyle changes, talk about some functional medicine stuff and getting to the root cause of 99% of our symptoms and our issues. Missing out, of course, things like pharmaceuticals and surgery, which can be very important in endometriosis as well. So I decided I'm actually just going to start a program and something I'm really excited about is, well, Anyway, how comprehensive it's going to be. I was thinking a small program, but now I really want to do something that like it walks everyone through the steps to do it seen through the lens of nervous system re-regulation, that safety aspect you're talking about. And from safety, it's eating the right kinds of foods that your body needs, the, the blood sugar regulation aspect. It talks about proper breathing mechanics, which seems really boring, but it's like most of our breathing mechanics are reversed. We're breathing through our chest, not our diaphragms. And what that, that not only deoxygenates you and lowers your detox capabilities, but it actually primes your body for constant fight or flight. Like you almost can't escape it because you're telling your body at all times how stressed you are. So certain things like that, like retraining your movement patterns. If you've read my book, I'm really into functional movement. It's not like doing a hit class, it's how do you move every day? Like most people who have endometriosis cannot do a squat, not because um, they're not strong enough, but because their body mechanics are totally wonky enough. And this is me when I was like, oh, I'll do a squat challenge. Like, oh, my knee is now broken and my quadriceps is pulled. And your knees and your quadriceps have nothing to do with the squat. Like it really should be so much of the glutes and the ankles, but with zero mobility, you can't do these basic primal movements, which is actually foundational for pelvic health, like absolutely foundational. So we're talking about reoxygenating the pelvic, the peritoneal cavity. We're talking about bringing more blood, more lymph, waking up that entire, the entire region, right? And that involves special kinds of movements to, to move like our ancestors or for people who don't wear shoes and sit at desks all day, which is a, a great deal of people in populations around the world today. So it's going to talk amongst all these things and more. And I hope to keep it at a really affordable price because working with a qualified nutritionist or a nutritional therapist is thousands and thousands of dollars. And for good reason, they really help you and hold your hand. It's just that the majority of people can't afford something like that. So it's going to be affordable. It's going to be a comprehensive program and you'll have access to me as well without me having to spend so much time just with um, clients one-on-one. So valuable because we are, we're you can't afford it. So you are looking and digging for this information and through books and other resources. And like you said, a little bit of a, maybe even starting with a throw it against the wall and see what sticks approach. But it's in educating yourself, that's just how it goes. So to have a program where it's already a lot of that sweat work (laughs) is done. It is just, just do this. Like this is where you start. And it's, I think, especially talking about the nervous system regulation and some of the things that people don't necessarily think about when you're in that much pain and they focus so much on the physical or they focus so much on the diet, having that whole round approach into treating this is also so important and so valuable, so valuable. Yeah, I think of what you said that you wished you had this book when you were first diagnosed and I wish I had the book when I was first diagnosed. I wrote the book to 
my 20 year old self. It was my way to translate all of the scientific information into a readable format that people could understand. I'd be like, would 24 year old Katie understand this information? No, she wouldn't. So cut, let's rewrite that whole part. So I wrote that for myself and it's the same, it's the same thing. Let's not make all the mistakes that Katie made and not just, I wasn't like going off the wall there. Almost everyone I know makes the exact same mistakes that I made. Like anyone who starts to look down the endometriosis channels and what you end up doing is actually making yourself worse before you get better, right? Because you're trying all these things that are wrong. So you can actually like create nutritional deficiencies. You can do, you're creating more problems. So if you can get there at a baseline before you've created more problems for yourself. And then from there, really work to feel better and better. And I say at the end of the program, however long it takes someone to finish it, if it's three months or six months or nine months, by the end of the program, maybe you feel 50% better, but you still need a surgery. But now your body is able to handle that surgery without a, a whole entire health collapse, which happens right. to women after some surgeries, which is horrible because their bodies were so stressed beyond belief, chemically, physically, mentally, everything that they couldn't tolerate the surgery or they have way too much inflammation. Or maybe at the end of the program, you feel like you're in complete remission, right? There's such, such a huge spectrum of what you can achieve from these from the changes, it just depends on where your body is at. But at least when it goes along with following all the clues that your body is telling you that is is wrong, like you follow the clues and see what can you banish. And from there, yeah. you say, well, this is the extra support that I need. Yeah, absolutely. And regardless of being actually able to afford all of this stuff, having it right there, it's just awesome. And then at the same time, there's these doctors that it's not even a, an affordability question, which again, this could be another episode. We've come up with three episodes during this one, <laughs> but just that people aren't even equipped to have this, to even talk, to even have a conversation about it. Doctors aren't trained in nutrition. OBGYN is the time nutrition. you're, they're not trained in endo. They're not trained really to even they'll prescribe drugs like Lupron which has been criminally sued causing mm -hmm. permanent damage to people it's a crisis it's a real crisis it's a real problem and it's really robbing people not only of their health but then of future generations of their fertility of many things which is why it's so criminal but like I said we could go on and on with that for another episode as well that should be another one of my billboards, actually. Endometriosis is treatable. That's the whole thing. Well, and that like you treat the disease and it goes away. There's so many treatments that really work. The, the confusing thing, and I don't like the word confusing, it's like the complex, the complexity of it is that some treatments work better for some women than others. But that shouldn't stop. That shouldn't make it a confusing matter. It just means we need to sleuth out what your best treatment is based on your disease. And just because there's no cure doesn't mean your endometriosis can't be treated, right? And it could be 10, 10 or 50 things that help treat it. But at the end of the day, it should be treatable. Like you're saying, it's, it should be criminal that it has gotten to be at the point that it has gotten really criminal. So now you brought us to my favorite time. It's the biohacking with art time. Are you ready? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Good. It is our finale question. If you could describe healing endometriosis with any art medium, how would you make it and what would you choose? Okay. So for this one, I think the answer is only this answer now in the past like year and a half since I actually started facing my shit and before that I would have gone deep into like fine art but for the first time in my life I'm gonna say it's like an avatar-esque community free-spirited dance party like where right. you people are just going nuts and like rootsy dancing with drums and there's like fireflies around and everyone's doing their own thing and just like really feeling it the nirvana of everything has aligned perfectly between everyone around us, like the holding hands thing internally, like not being self-conscious to do the dance as needed, having the, the amount of energy and 
happiness that it takes to get up and dance without inhibition, that takes a lot. That really takes a lot, especially if you're not trained in it as a community. Like I saw when I was in Senegal, people just dance all the time. Like we don't do that. So I think that's to me, it's almost like healing from endo in a nutshell is like we heal together, we heal alone, but at the end of the day, we can heal. And it's like the joy of reclaiming one's health, I would say. Wow. Beautiful. I see really the choreography and it's it's such a perfect description because it also is in alignment with the idea that no one achieves anything alone. We are alone. I suffered alone, as did you. But I found a resource in a book and then another book and then something else and then a pelvic floor physical therapy and then sex therapy. And it's like, we're doing this dance together and now here we are on the podcast and it's like sometimes we're solo and we're like breaking out like our own kind of dance fight with someone else and then sometimes it's like the festival where we're like dancing our way over to like pelvic floor physical therapy and it's oh my god this is a whole other soundtrack I hadn't realized (laughs) like a hundred percent and this would not be me describing it like a few years ago. Like the idea of like free spirit and <laughs> dancing would be like, ugh, cringing. Like, that's not my thing. Like, I just didn't. But when it is like that, once you get to like, I want to say the other side, but to the side where you actually have broken down that shell that has held back so much your whole life without realizing it is like, life is joyous, even amongst the pain, like being okay with the pain. Like, being okay with my dad dying, like being joyously dancing with his spirit, like being okay with life and all it brings us because life is heavy, but that's okay. And that's where we can all do it together. It's way too hard to do alone. But um, even our deepest trenches, um, finding the joy is so important, even if it feels really hard. Absolutely. Pain is a messenger. So don't shoot the messenger because you might miss the message. So important. Yeah. (laughs) It's been so real having this tremendous conversation with you today. Please let everyone listening know how they can connect with you and where they can find you and learn more about your work. Yeah, I have a free blog that is really extensive. So this is the first place you could end up. It's healendo, just as it sounds, dot com. I'm at heal.endo on Instagram. And then you can find my books on Amazon. You can search Heal Endo or Katie Edmonds. It's my other one is the four week endometriosis diet plan. That's like really specific for you want a diet and meal and recipes. And then the other one is Heal Endo, an anti inflammatory approach to healing from endometriosis. So there's a few ways, but healendo.com is the easiest way you can connect to everything. You can email me from the site. Awesome. And we will also totally list all of these resources we chatted about today and more in the show notes. We also have these really fun videos Katie shared with me about endometriosis, which those will also be in the research links in the show notes for everyone to understand just a little bit bigger of the context of the conversation we're having. But I hope Everyone is able to take away something from this conversation today to help them go out, face their shit, therefore healing themselves. And remember, as always, the truth will set you free. We will see you all next time. Bye. If you liked this episode or you think this show would be useful for someone else, the best way you can show your support is to share it on your social media outlets with family and friends or subscribe with the link below to receive exclusive perks. And if you're feeling really generous, please leave a review on podchaser.com, YouTube, or Apple Podcasts and pick up a signed copy of my book about how I healed myself from endometriosis on my Instagram at Meredith W. Ochoa. Thank you so much for listening and for having the bravery to face your shit and heal yourself.